Dr. Melissa Party. I'm an employee here at the museum, a curator of paleontology uh, at the Research and Collection Center, which is where we store all of the fossils for the Illinois State Museum. Today we're going to be talking about the direct evidence of life in the past, fossils, and what they can tell us about how things have changed over time and how environments have changed over time. Different rocks are formed in different environments, and there are different animals and plants that live in those environments. Rocks also form in a particular way that allows us to look at how things change over time. How can rocks tell us time? Well, if you imagine you were constructing a cake with lots and lots of layers, you'd have to put one layer down, maybe a little frosting in between, then put your second layer on top, and then progressively the more layers on top of that. Well, the layer that was all the way at the bottom had to come first in order to put the second one on top and then the third and so forth. So things that are on the bottom were laid down first and are older and things that come later on top are successively younger. Rocks form in a very similar fashion with the oldest rocks at the bottom and the youngest rocks on top. And the fossils in those rocks can change over time which tells you how not just the animals change over time, but also the environments. So the first fossil I'm going to show you is some fossil tree bark. So if you think about it, where do trees live? They live on land. So this is a rock that formed on or very close to land. Um, other fossils that would have been found in a similar location as this fossil tree bark are some of these leaves. Another good sign of evidence that you're on land is also finding animals that live on land. I don't know if you can see this. Hold it. Are you able to get a good look at that? Okay, so what this is, is it's an animal. Um, it is a very close relative of spiders. And so we know that it's closely related to spiders because scientists have studied this fossil as well as other ones like it and have noticed that there are um, parts of its body that look very similar to spiders. So similar to a spider, it has eight legs. Um, and by looking at all of these different parts of the animal, they can um, see how closely related it might be to living animals today. So in this case, this is a close relative of what are called arachnids, which includes spiders. So, what I just showed you are things that would be located on land, but as you move further and further off the land, you get different kinds of rocks with different fossils. Uh, so this is actually a piece of sandstone, and this would have been formed on what would have been a beach in the past, at the opening of a river as it entered into the ocean. And so it was actually bringing some land fossils down into that beach area. Another fossil that you might find kind of close to land but in the water. So this is actually a horseshoe crab. And we have animals that are alive today that look very similar and in fact they look so similar to what they look like in their fossil record that we consider them um, uh, living fossils. So things that look very similar to um, their fossil forms in the past. Moving a little bit further into the water away from the shore, uh, we would then encounter our state fossil, the Tully monster.
So this is a very strange animal that has no close living relatives. Um, and because it is so strange and has aspects of its body that are unclear, scientists have spent a long time trying to figure out just where it fits into the, the broader tree of life for all living things on the planet. So this would have been an animal that lived in the water. Um, it was free swimming. So it was swimming around looking for its food, looking for each other. Um, and reconstructions of this animal uh, really illustrate how strange this animal was. So it had a tail, um, a long soft body that had segments, and then these eyes that come off on stalks on the side of the body. And then finally, this trunk-like appendage off the front of the animal that had claspers, presumably for catching prey. So if we move even further away from land, into the, into, more into the water, we find even different types of fossils. Uh, here we have a, um, a snail that would have lived in the ocean at the time. And then here we have a rock that's called limestone. This forms um, in shallow oceans. And this is part of an animal that's called a crinoid. And it's a, um, an animal that's very closely related to starfish. Um, and they actually are still alive today. So this would have been the stalk um, of the animal that it would hold itself upright. And then what these animals have are these, they're not really heads, but it kind of comes to the top of, of the animal where the mouth would be with all of these little arms um, coming off of it for catching um, tidbits of food that were in the water. And then finally, as we move further and further away from shore into deeper and deeper water, you can get animals that are free swimming, that are, that are, that are moving around hunting for prey in much deeper water. And this is an example um, of a part of a jaw of a, of a shark that lived a very, very long time ago in Illinois. So this is an extinct animal. Of course, we still have sharks alive today, and they are related, and they have characteristics that are similar to each other. So when we look at our layer cake of rocks, and we see that we have different types of rocks and different types of animals changing over time, what that tells us is that the environment in that location is changing. And one of the ways that we actually um, can uh, uh, in interpret that is that environments uh, do change over time, over long periods of time, um, and that if we have raising and lowering sea level, that brings different environments um, in and out of a location. And this is what happened um, in Illinois during a time period called the Pennsylvanian. And this was a very, very long time ago, around 300 million years ago, which is a big number to try and understand. Um, but this is before there were mammals um, walking on dry land, um, before the dinosaurs even. So this was a very, very long time ago. So here are some more fossils of plants. And again, this is more evidence that um, at the time that these rocks formed, uh, there was a forest, um, a lush forest, kind of like a tropical forest um, present in Illinois. So another time um, in Illinois past that was very, very different from the present was during a time period called the Ice Ages. This time period was called the Ice Ages because there was 
a large sheet of ice that had formed uh, just north of, of the United States. And actually, part of this ice called glaciers came down into Illinois, and at some points in the past, Illinois was completely covered in ice. Um, however, over time, that ice did melt and move away, and as that ice disappeared, new environments uh, moved in to take its place, and we have evidence of that happening in the fossil record. Two of the animals that were present in Illinois around um, the time of the Ice Ages uh, are uh, mammoths and mastodons. Uh, these are animals um, that were very, very large, like modern day elephants. And they have a lot of characteristics between them that look very similar. They both have trunks, they both have tusks, um, and even though they have, because they have these similarities, uh, we do know that they are related to each other. However, they are very different animals in other respects. Um, you can tell just by these models, uh, their sizes were a little bit different. Uh, the way that they stood was a little bit different. The mammoth was a little bit taller at the shoulders. The tusks were a little bit different shaped. And ultimately, um, if you take a look inside their mouths, you'll see that they have very different teeth as well. So the mammoth, we'll do the mammoth first. This is a tooth from a mammoth, and I am going to pick this up. It's quite heavy. So this tooth would have sat in the jaw of the mammoth, and the gums like you have on your teeth would have come up along the tooth like this. So this is one tooth. And this is the surface that the mammoth would have chewed up its food with. And this looks very different from what a mastodon tooth looks like. So this is a mastodon tooth. And you can see instead of a flat chewing surface, it's got different cones. And the cones are used uh, for snipping at, at, um, at leaves, specifically. So these animals have very different teeth, and they eat very different diets as a result of having those different teeth. And because they're eating different diets and different plants, they live in different environments. So this reconstruction here is showing a mastodon. So that would be this guy with its cones cones on the teeth, living in what would be a forest. In contrast, the mammoth, uh, with its big teeth and lots and lots of surface area, is primarily chewing on grasses. And so when we find lots of mammoths, we know that there's, there's probably a lot of grass around. And when we find lots of mastodons, we know that there's a forest around. And sometimes, we actually find both animals together at the same time, which indicates that the environment would probably have been a mix of these two types of environments. We do find that in Illinois. I'm just gonna walk you through some of our collection uh, briefly and uh, point out that we have actually a very large collection um, of these very large mammals from Illinois during our ice age. Especially we have a whole lot of skeleton remains from mastodons. So these would be animals that were large animals that were browsing in forests, chewing on leaves, that had the teeth with, with the cones. And if you look at these different bones, uh, if you look at them carefully and kind of for a long time, you start to see that they are the same bones that you have in your body. Because like us, uh, mastodons were mammals. Um, and they have all the same bones in their skeleton that we do. So for example, uh, these bones down here, this is the same bone that you have in the upper part of your arm. This is a really big shoulder blade. And these are tusks. So you might be saying to yourself, I don't have tusks. 
Um, tusks are actually teeth. Tusks are actually teeth um, that um, elephants and mammoths and mastodons um, evolved to have these long tusks coming out of their face. And they, we're not really sure exactly what they use them for. Uh, modern elephants use them for knocking over vegetation. They also use them in interactions with other elephants. And so based on what we observe in modern elephants, we can, um, we can make some educated guesses as to what mammoths and mastodons use them for. And then finally, we've got um, some parts of skulls here that have um, those really cool looking teeth in place. Before I wrap up, I just want to uh, share with everyone another extinct animal um, that was alive in Illinois during the last ice age. Uh, this is a stag moose. Um, it was a very large relative of deer and a lot of characteristics uh, that are similar to modern deer, except uh, very different looking and large antlers. And it was overall a much, much, much larger animal. Um, and so it, along with all the other very large mammals, went extinct when the, the ice age ended. Um, I wanted to thank you all for joining me here today. I hope you enjoyed um, some of the fossils that I shared with you and that you have a better understanding now of how things have changed in the past, how fossils tell us how those things have changed over time, um, and the very cool and weird uh, environments we had in Illinois throughout Earth's history. Thanks.